more though. Well, let's get an idea. NVIDIA 8102 GPUs powering next gen GeForce RTX 40 series rumored to stick with the PCI Gen 4 protocol. Okay. So NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards based on Ada Lovelace GPU architecture are expected to retain their existing Gen 4 compliancy as reported by Copite. NVIDIA will be launching its RTX 40 series graphics card based on the new Ada Lovelace GPU architecture later this year. The specifications and specific configurations for graphics card lineup have already been leaked, but the design of the card themselves is more a more interesting aspect. So far, we know that the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards will adopt the new ATX 3.0 compliant 12 PVH PWR 16 pin connector, which allows for up to 600 watts of power draw through a new PCI Gen 5 power connector interface. This power connector has already been featured on the 3090 Ti and currently allows for up to 450 watts of power draw through a triple eight pin adapter. But there's another aspect to allow the full PCI Gen 5 compliance, and that's the interface connector itself. Currently, modern graphics cards communicate with the CPU through a Gen 4 protocol. The Gen 4 protocol allows for 64 gigabytes a second of to a total and 32 gigabytes a second of bi-directional bandwidth. But the latest platforms from Intel and AMD support the brand new Gen 5 interface protocol. This new standard allows for up to 128 gigabytes a second of total and 64 gigabytes a second of bi-directional bandwidth. This will essentially double the bandwidth, but it looks like the upcoming graphics cards for the le uh, or at least the high-end RTX 40 graphics cards based on the 8102 GPU won't feature the Gen 5 interface just yet. Based on a tweet from Copite, the upcoming RTX 40 lineup will retain the Gen 4 protocol, which is a bold move by NVIDIA for not hopping on the next-gen standard, even though they are doing so in the HPC segment, where their Hopper GPU will be amongst the first to utilize the new protocol. Now, it makes sense that the HPC lineup features it because servers require a lot of bandwidth, and the Gen 5 protocol will help those environments. As for consumers, the PCIe Gen 5 interface is just too much bandwidth and current GPUs are yet to fully saturate the Gen 4 interface. Now having Gen 4 bodes well for entry level lineup, which doesn't need to worry about bottlenecks if they are equipped with lower lanes, as well as the case with the RX 6500 and 6400 series, which when switching over to Gen 3 standard end up with less than required graphics bandwidth, leading to poor performance versus the Gen 4 compliance standard. If the high-end lineup isn't starving the Gen 4 standard, then the low-end lineup is far from hitting the max threshold. So far, we can't say for sure if NVIDIA will truly retain the Gen 4 on its upcoming 40 series cards, but that could change as marketing does like to have or like having the gen 5 logo for the new cards aside from gen 5 and gen 4 support nvidia is also seemingly going to make major changes to the way its cuda cores are arranged within ada lovelace architecture the gpus for the rtx 40 series will not just uh, be a simple cuda core bump from amp here but could include a range of new mixed precision cores that aren't detailed yet the lineup is still a few months away from introduction so a lot could change but we will make sure to keep you updated. Now remember what we're seeing with 7000 series from AMD is going to be a chiplet design which could in theory give AMD and Radeon a significant advantage over Nvidia on this next release. So uh, it should be interesting to see what happens. Obviously what it sounds like is Nvidia is playing around with another way to go ahead and compete with Radeon from that perspective. Not dissimilar from Intel going to basically utilizing this kind of hybrid core setup of having, you know, efficiency cores and performance cores on the 12,000 12, series to go ahead and catch up to the Ryzen chips, at least in multi-core performance, but also still retain their high gigahertz uh, or per like single threaded performance uh, over AMD, which is kind of the, the route they took. And we'll just have to go ahead and see how this lines up. But either way, I think we're getting very cool technologies coming up from both Radeon and GeForce 
Problem being, of course, as we go back to this cr these crazy power requirements, they're going to make it from a mining perspective probably not very attractive, uh, if I had to say the least. I mean, even these 1,300 watts uh, power supplies that are coming at best are going to be able to power like two of them while mining, and you still have to worry about those power spikes, and you're not going to be wanting to run anything but, but platinum-rated PCI Gen 5 ready power supplies for the new GPUs. And that means from a miner's perspective, kind of having to get rid of a lot of your old power supply equipment and upgrade. And even then you're not gonna be able to power like massive rigs of six to 12 cards kind of thing. Unless of course we see some new designs on breakout boards come from Parallel Miner. But because of the way breakout boards have to be developed and they're kind of always way behind the curve, it's probably going to take a long time for them to ever get to that point either um, because all the equipment will have to release first, all the new standards will have to release first, and they'll have to re reverse engineer all of that and figure out what they're going to do with their new designs. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.